everyone, it's Chris and Jamie from Steeda. Today we're going to show you ultimately what a dyno is and what to expect if you're taking your Mustang to a dyno day with your local club. Jamie, can you tell us what a dyno is, just very top level? It's just a uh, mechanical way to determine how much power your car makes. It uh, uses the roller and how fast you can spin that roller up with your car, basically determines how much power it makes. Exactly. So uh, this will equate pound-feet of torque from the rear wheels of your Mustang and then ultimately an equation of horsepower as well. Yep. So Jamie, tell us a little bit about how they strap the car down, how they cool the car while it's doing the pull, you know, how they get RPM off of the engine, things like that. Well, we use ratchet straps that are, have a high enough rating to, you know, keep your car secure. Uh, we use four tie downs on Mustangs, tie the rear control arms or the rear axle housing, depending on if your car is an independent rear suspension or a live axle car. Uh, cross them in the back so the car doesn't try to move side to side. Uh, we use wheel chocks as well just to keep the car nice and stable. Uh, cooling fans are absolutely necessary because the cooling fan on your car does not have the capacity to cool with the car sitting stationary when you are making a full power, full load pull on the dyno. You also have an inductive pickup that attaches to one of your coils to supply an RPM signal to the uh, dyno computer. That way it can calculate what the horsepower and torque are at any given RPM. And when they're actually doing the pull, um, in most cases they will try to do the pull in the one-to-one -one gear. That way they're getting the exact horsepower rating without a multiplier from the transmission. Um, Jamie, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the controller and how they would actually break the car when they're done making the pull. The, uh, the dyno drum, the roller itself, has built-in air brakes that will stop the roller from turning. That way you're not having to use the car's brakes to try to slow down the roller. Uh, it'll burn your back brakes off your car in a uh, very short order trying to do that. So they have air brakes, brake shoes, applies the brakes to the drum, sl uh, slows it down and stops it. Uh, before we dive into exactly how to read the dyno graph, Jamie, can you tell us what Mustang owners need to be aware of before they go to a dyno day to make sure that their car is ready to go? Yeah, they just need to make sure that they've checked all the, check the condition of, their, of your car, make sure that your oil level is topped off and in good condition, that your coolant level is topped off, that you have set your tire pressures uh, according to the tires themselves and that they're both even left to right and that you have torqued your lug nuts. It would be a real shame to have a tire explode on the dyno or come off on the dyno because you didn't check something. You don't want to be one of those viral videos, so that's why we're doing this video to prevent that from happening. With that said, Jamie, I guess this is a great, uh, great overview of what to expect when they strap your car down to the dyno getting ready. We're going to show you now how to go over the dyno sheet and exactly how to read it. So a lot of speed shops, if they have a dyno and that's where you're running, um, they may have a TV or a computer pointed towards the dyno, and this is what you're going to see. Jamie, why don't you go over exactly what's in this layout of this dashboard? Well, this is basically your, your dyno run screen that's going to give you your engine RPM, the mile per hour of the dyno roller, uh, gives you your other options. It'll tell you what the ambient temperature of the dyno room is, uh, we also have a boost reference gauge to be able to see what the uh, manifold pressure is on uh, boosted application cars, whether it's turbo or supercharged. Uh, other options include wide bands, uh, so you can actually, cars that, if you're tuning with a dyno, you can tell what your air fuel ratio is. Uh, but this is the basic screen, basic information that you're going to see while the car is actually being uh, while the car is actually making a dyno pull. Now moving over to the dyno graph, uh, most dyno graphs, especially for dyno jets, are going to look very similar. You're going to have a horsepower curve and a torque curve. Um, correction factor, do you mind explaining exactly what that is, Jamie? The correction factor is just so you can even out uh, different areas of the country to all basically come up with the same dyno reading. It's a calculation to determine, uh, or to, it's a calculation 
to even out temperature, altitude, humidity, barometric pressure, uh, those kind of things. So if you dyno your car in South Florida, you should roughly have the same reading as you do in Denver. Exactly. So typically, uh, most, most correction factors, um, or I should say most people use the SAE correction factor. STD is also a common one that's seen. Um, we like to use SAE here. So right now we're looking at a dynograph from a 2019 GT. Um, 391 peak horsepower, 374 pound-feet of torque. Uh, Jamie, can you show us how to read peak horsepower and exactly where that is, the same with peak torque? Well, first you have to follow which one of the lines is horsepower and torque. Uh, over on the left of the screen, you'll see that it has horsepower, and this line is your horsepower. Over here you have your torque, and foot pounds, and this line is your torque. Uh, it's all done incrementally in engine RPM so that you know at any given RPM what your horsepower and torque is. Uh, this one, its maximum torque or maximum horsepower was at 6,000 RPM. So at 6,000 RPM, you can see that where your horsepower is compared to your horsepower scale over to the left. Uh, your peak torque, which is at 4690, you can find where 4690 is on your engine RPM scale. Go over to your torque scale and see where the maximum number comes out over here. That about wraps things up. I mean, this is a really good top level overview of what to expect when you go to a dyno day, how they're gonna strap your car down, what the dyno operator is gonna be doing in terms of making the pull, what gear they're gonna be in, things like that. And ultimately the best part, how to read the dyno sheet and how much horsepower your car makes. So if you have any questions, please comment below. Let us know your thoughts. And uh, if you do have any questions, we're happy to answer them. What kind of horsepower does your Mustang or Ford make? We wanna know. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.